Good Wednesday morning. Welcome back to local 4 news today. We do have some spotty, very light showers moving through the area. Broken record, I know, but these are lighter showers and the winds are lighter today. I think through the late morning, things start to really dry out. It's 43 now and will be near 50 this afternoon, mid afternoon. A couple of peaks of sun too, Kim. All right, Brandon. Well, it's definitely slick out there, but I do have some great news to get you going this morning. Northbound I-75, that accident we had just past Verner has just cleared, so we're looking good there. And even better news, we are accident free now to start off your Wednesday morning. All right, Kim, thank you. The recall has homeowners on high alert after more than a half a million dishwashers are being deemed a fire hazard. So the company BSH Home Appliances says five power cords have overheated, causing fires and property damages. Thankfully, no injuries have been reported, but we do want to let you know the appliances have been sold under the names Gen Air, Thermador, Bosch, and Gaganau from January of 2013 through May of 2015. A link to the model numbers can be found right there on the Help Me Hank page of clickondetroit.com. It is 526 here on your Wednesday morning and walkers have been warned and now they'll have to pay a fine. Ahead in our next half hour, a new distracted walking law <laughs> begins today. We'll have everything that you need to know. Also hiding in plain sight, a chilling update on the suspected serial killer in Tampa, Florida suggests that he's probably someone that lives right in that community. But first, profiting from the water emergency problem. After the break, a live update on sky high water prices and a scam alert. They protect live from downtown Detroit. Local 4 News Today at 5.30 starts now. The rush for water. A local business caught selling a case of water for $19. Yeah, we're talking $19 for one single case and customers are not happy about it. I said, well, bull I was hoping people wouldn't be, you know, I've got water, but it's going to cost you to get. Ridiculous. And we confronted the owner of that business, and we've learned of another way that crooks are targeting water emergency victims as well. And in the weather department, it's really starting to feel like fall. Dare we say winter? We're waking up to some wet and chilly conditions across Metro Detroit this morning. It was definitely, whew. well, I guess maybe I wasn't dressed for it yesterday. I mean, I, I had a little wrap either. on, but it was windy and it yeah. was windy up underneath in my short sleeves. And I was like, I'm so cold. It I can't was, wait to get to my car. But here's the thing. Even though those raindrops <laughs> fell a little bit, I kept thinking, this could be snow. Don't complain. Don't complain. You know what I mean? Yes. Well, we are making that transition into more, I mm -hmm. would assume, Brandon, kind of seasonable temperatures. We had it so good for so long. It's a little shock to the system. And this should be the best, well, for some, the best time of the year, hitting fall where the colors are beautiful, the conditions should be comfortable. Instead, uh, it's just been wet and a little bit raw and it's cool out there, but these numbers are pretty close to where we should be this time of year. 40 in Lapeer, 41 Pontiac, Flint and Howell both at 40, 42 in Ann Arbor, 43 degrees right now at Metro Airport will be right around 43 at 8 a.m. with still some light rain or drizzle moving through noon time the rain showers are wrapping up the breezes are lighter it's still cool uh, 48 degrees at noon and a high near 50 with clouds turning to some sun just don't expect a ton through the afternoon but certainly a nicer afternoon than morning as you see some of these light showers that are moving in and as Evrod said at least it's not snow it is snowing up north here in the UP and in the Traverse City area, getting a little wintry mix there. So we will track some improvements, both sky and temperature wise coming up. But right now, Kim, for live traffic and the slippery start, how is the impact? Well, it is slippery out there, but luckily we don't have any accidents to deal with right now. We did have some trouble over on I-75, but that has cleared. So let's talk about some construction. I do want to let you know about this project happening over in Northfield Township, North and Southbound US 23 between North Territorial Road and Six Mile. That's going to have one lane blocked. This is a nightly project starting at 7 p.m., wrapping up at 5 a.m. It's going to 
continue overnight during that same time wrapping up on Saturday morning. Also part of the same constru construction project east and westbound Joy Road right at US 23 will be closed overnight. This closure starts at 8 p.m. ending at 5 a.m. Also happening nightly until Saturday morning at 5 a.m. So in the meantime to get around this one what you need to do is use Warren Road instead. And we've got more construction to talk about over on I-75. I'll tell you about that in my next report at 544. Back to you. Alrighty, Kim will check back in with you shortly. It is 533 and 12 communities are under a boil water warning. 51,000 people are without water. Yes, the part to repair the broken water main there at 14 Mile and Drake in the West Bloomfield Farmington Hills area is expected to arrive today. That doesn't mean the total fix will happen today. Clean water isn't expected to start flowing through that pipe and back into your homes until at least Friday. That is a long time to wait and go without clean water. Adding insult to injury scammers. Uh, we know that they're always out there already taking advantage of this emergency water situation. Yes, if we could use their ambition for scamming for something for good, it would be quite nice around these times. Local force Nick Monticelli is live at the scene of that water main break. And boy, Nick, these people have no shame, do they? You know, it's kind of pathetic in a way, and I don't use that word very often on the news, but come on, people are already in a bad situation with no water or having to boil their water at homes to put them through something like this. That water main break over there is why all this is happening. You can see the water flowing out because of pumps trying to get to that fix. But as you mentioned, in the meantime, there are some price gouging issues, and there's one situation that, frankly, I can't even figure out. Businesses in Oakland County are having a hard time keeping up with demand, and by this morning, there's a good chance they are just flat out of these flats. Yeah, a lot of places around here are just out. The moment the doors opened at the Freshway Market in Walled Lake, the rush started. We were out of water by uh, 1130 in the morning. All because people are dealing with this. It just dribbles out of the faucet. Also in Walled Lake, an apparent case of price gouging at this mobile gas station at Maple and Decker. They were selling a case of water for 19 bucks. By the time our cameras got there, the price was down to $4.99, but earlier there clearly was a sign for $19. Jermont Terry talked to the owner on the phone. You see my sign over there, like four ninety-nine. It says four ninety-nine now, but the sign earlier clearly states it was nineteen dollars. You're telling me it will cost nineteen dollars every day? Yeah, if you buy every day the case, how much you want to sell? You tell me. So while you should watch out for price gouging, you should also be on alert for your own security. Oakland County's Homeland Security Division sent out this warning, telling residents about an imposter. Someone is calling facilities, posing as a representative from the Oakland County Emergency Operations Center and telling them to evacuate. Why? We have no idea, but there are no evacuation orders in place. Even with all of this that you're looking live at right now, there are no evacuation orders in place. So, Everett, it's one of those situations that you just shake your head and you go, come on, really? $19 for a case of water or uh, even scamming or trying to get people to evacuate a facility. I, I still can't figure out why you'd want to do that. I guess they're just trying to have a prank. I guess that's the best way to put it. Or possibly to go in there when you think that you've gotten everybody out and, and rob the place. Uh, I can't imagine. I can't believe that people are trying to take advantage during this difficult time for so many people. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Nick, for the update there. Be sure to go to clickondetroit.com. We've got everything you need to know about this water emergency, including where you can get free water, water distribution centers, and an updated list of the school closings. Rhonda? Uh, Brad, thank you. Macomb County Clerk Karen Springer, you see here, caught... Right, caught up in another controversy. This time she appears to be violating a court order and you can see it caught on camera there. Last month it was determined by a judge that she violated the National Labor Relations Act. From that ruling, the judge recommended an order which included that a notice stating the clerk would obey the law and not harass employees be posted in the office. The notice was posted, but as you see, Springer along with another woman are seen on video covering that poster up. The court case is still pending. Are, are you concerned process, that's due violating a court order? It's violating my rights. So you don't think this is violating a court order? No, it's okay. not violating a court order.
Springer has filed an appeal to the ruling on her own behalf. She has a lot of work ahead of her as her own counsel because the American Federation of State, County and Municipal Employees has filed an unrelated unfair labor practice charge against her alleging harassment. Well, the clock has taken in war this morning as police are searching for two thieves who made off with kind of an unusual haul. Take a look. This man entered the CVS store on Nine Mile and Shaner, took the business keys from behind the counter and opened a cologne cabinet. Now, before leaving the store with this man in the red jacket, he filled his book bag with $2,500 worth of cologne. Now, if you can identify either of these good smelling men, you are asked to contact police and police are looking for this man who broke into a gun shop in Roseville, getting through the roof of Peter's gun shop and grabbed as many weapons as he could before taking off. If you recognize this person or have any information about this crime, please give Roseville police a call. Former Army Sergeant Bo Bergdahl will be sentenced today after previously being postponed. Bergdahl pleaded guilty to desertion and misbehavior before the enemy, walking away from a post in Afghanistan in 2009. He was captured by the Taliban, spending nearly five years captive until a U.S. prisoner exchange in 2014. It is at 538 and all rise this morning. Hundreds of local students are going to be part of a Michigan Supreme Court case. We've got all the details. And speaking of court, there's a decision in a high profile case involving Eminem. Mm. Jason Carr has that for us in the carport ahead at six plus this. And we will hunt this son of a down until we find him. All right. Yes, tough talk from the mayor of Tampa, Florida. After the break, why a suspected serial killer may still be lurking nearby. We're not super. Welcome back, everybody. The hunt for an alleged serial killer in one Tampa, Florida neighborhood continues. And investigators say that there is no rhyme or reason behind these three different murders. The murders which have occurred in the city's Seminole Heights neighborhood began on October 9th with the last happening last Thursday. Investigators believe that they are all connected. All of the victims were found alone and within a half mile of each other. None of them knew each other. At a community meeting Monday, officials took took down the names of everyone attending in case the killer was bold enough to show up. A former FBI profiler says that the killer's MO suggests that there's a good chance that he's from that neighborhood. He's comfortable with this area. Maybe he grew up here, works here, or currently lives here. There's a very good likelihood that someone in this room knows who's doing it. Oh, let's hope that they can track him down before he strikes again. Right now, police have very few leads on who may be behind these killings. Colin Kaepernick is making a career move. The free agent quarterback is putting down a football and picking up a pen instead. He opted out of his contract earlier this year, and since then, he's kind of had a hard time finding a team to sign him. So he signed a million dollar book deal instead. The former 49er shopped his stories to a, a few publishers before choosing to sign with Penguin Random House Imprint One World. So good for him. You know, he's got uh, a great story, in fact, a story that a lot of people I'm sure will want to read. Mm -hmm. So we know that it's often challenging to get children excited about consuming a nutritious diet, eating a nutritious diet. But on Tuesday, I got a chance to catch up with Detroit Piston, Andre Drummond, who spoke to local students about doing just that. Well, it certainly helps to have a big, tall basketball yeah. player come to your school. Drummond was at Mumford High School in Detroit to celebrate National School Lunch Week. The students at Mumford won a video contest where they highlighted their love for dairy. Drummond also presented a check for $5,000 for the school's basketball team as part of a grant. Which will then be used by chocolate milk that the teams, the boys and girls basketball teams can use as a recovery drink after practices or games. Um, he loves drinking milk, he told me. And uh, they even did a Q&A where the kids got picked to come up and ask him whatever question they wanted. And one kid came up and said, so what about them free throws that you keep missing? Oh. Right wow. to his face. And so how do you handle that? He shot back and said, I shoot free throws 87%. Yeah, he's said, doing a lot better. He's been yeah. working on it the last couple of years intensely, and you can tell he's better this season. Mm -hmm. So 87% yeah. is he had a good comeback. That's yeah. good. Go to my Facebook page and look at the height difference between us. It is 
ridiculous. And you are six feet tall. Yeah, six one. <laughs> Sorry. I get my extra inch. Yes, you do. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so happening today, pedestrians in Honolulu, Hawaii are going to be subject to a fine if they're caught texting or even tweeting, maybe even Facebooking on their way to the beach. Yes, on the way to the beach. Doesn't that sound good? I know, right? <laughs> this is the city's new smartphone zombie law is set to go into effect. So under this law, anyone who is caught looking at their cell phone or any electronic device for that matter while crossing the street could receive a fine fine up to $35. Second time violators within the same year will be fined between $35 and $75, while a fine for a third time offender, offender could be as much as $100. Ouch. Honolulu is the first major city in the U.S. to pass a distracted walking ordinance. So I would, I would definitely face a lot of fines. One person who would not ever get a fine. Brandon. Brandon, he still has text messages from 2013 from me that he hasn't read <laughs> or replied to. Well, um, mm -hmm. I don't have that money that you asked for in 2013, <laughs> so I ignore it. Uh, here's a look, Evrod, for, for little Malachi and Shay to know what's coming your way. Halloween night, it is Tuesday ahead. <laughs> I told you I was going to be dancing on the show this morning. Here we go. <laughs> Is what about him, Kevin? All right, there we go. So the models are split on Halloween night. Just to let you know, looks like we're going to be in the 40s and a little breezy, mostly dry. I do have one model that's trying to throw uh, some late afternoon showers in the mix. And Monday, Halloween Eve, looks like parts of the area could see a little wintry mix. So there is going to be another cool shot of air coming down at us this coming weekend, just as we're experiencing out there right now. 43 degrees here. It's 40 in Saginaw, and we have upper 30s upstate where they're also seeing a little wintry mix on your Wednesday morning. Something you should know if anybody's leaving now heading to Traverse City area, they're getting some lake enhanced showers, mostly rain, but a couple of pellets mixed in there as well. We're struggling in the 40s most of the day. The wet weather is with us early, but by mid to late morning, things are wrapping up. Afternoon is certainly drier, near 50 degrees, still a little breezy, but not nearly as gusty as the last couple of days. West southwest winds 5 to 15. Here is the radar picture, and you can see uh, right along uh, probably six, seven mile up into nine, ten mile across Wayne County here, southern Oakland and southern Macomb County, getting some light showers here. Also, more wet weather moving into Washtenaw, northern Livingston County. Spotty showers out there again through the morning hours, but we're going to get into some drier weather tonight tonight and overnight, and that means early tomorrow, 35 in Detroit, freezing in many of your neighborhoods, but bright skies warm nicely, 54 Thursday afternoon. Friday will be 60-ish, uh, but rain comes in late Friday into early Saturday. I think it dries out by the time they kick off at the big house Saturday, but it will be a cool fall day and fall weekend. Kim is here now with your four live traffic. Good Wednesday morning. Good Wednesday morning. Great dance moves, Brandon. I liked them. All right, well, let's take a look at what's going on. No accidents to worry about right now, but those of you who find yourself traveling through Madison Heights today, you may see some slowdowns because we have some construction happening on the eastbound side of 12 mile right near I-75 here. One lane open between the hours of 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. This project happening daily during that time today, tomorrow, and Friday as well. Now we've got more construction to talk about over on northbound I-75 between 8 mile and I-696. One lane blocked there, 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. Also happening happening tomorrow and Friday as well. And then north and southbound I-75 between 13 Mile and Big Beaver. One lane blocked there, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. This will be happening daily during that time through Saturday. So you're definitely going to see a slowdown in that area as well. And stick around because if you're headed out the door soon towards I-96, we'll take a look at what that commute looks like with one of our MDOT cameras. That's coming up in my next report at 554. Back to you. All right, we'll see you in about five minutes, Kim. Thank you. It is 549 and it's time for some stories that you might have missed. The actor who transformed the sitcom role of a butler into the role 
of a candidate for governor sadly has died. Yeah, we're talking about Robert Guillaume. He played so many memorable roles on shows like The Jeffersons. We remember him in Sanford and Sons and of course Benson, the Emmy Award winning actor made history as the first African American to play the title role of Phantom of the Opera that was in Los Angeles. He passed away at his home in Los Angeles after a long battle with prostate cancer at the age of 89. Yeah. He uh, definitely had a great body of work there. Oh, he certainly did. Ones we really remember and, and gave us a lot of laughs as yeah. well. It is 550 and Halloween just six days away. Can yes, you believe this? for us, it is a very uh, it's a yearly tradition that we have here. Our local four team, we dress up in costumes and we Ridiculous always costumes. we always make it a surprise until the very last second. So <laughs> here's a look back at some of our costume reveals. Forecast for you. Everrod and Rhonda are breaking the news. Count on Kim to help with your commute. And Jason Carr keeps his bacon in bowls. Who'll give you tips in all four zones? <laughs> Narrated by our Kari Rufio Jones, we should mention our traffic <laughs> yes. reporting producer. Uh, so you saw we were characters from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory. Willy Wonka factor. in the Chocolate That's Factory last year. And you may be wondering what will be this year. Well, apparently our producers think this is a good hint for you. I don't even know what this is. And I was a part of this. <laughs> I don't think Do you know what this was. I, I remember, but I don't think it's going to help you much. I can tell you this. We had several wardrobe changes for this year's Halloween reveal. So. Yes, some of us showing a lot of skin this year <laughs> that I was not ready for. <laughs> um, but yeah, so tune in Tuesday morning, Halloween morning. We're going to reveal our Halloween costumes for this year during our 6 a.m. show. Trust me, you don't want to miss it. We're going to be sharing some more it. hints and stuff like that throughout the morning and throughout the week uh, to come. So. Maybe a look back to at some of our more memorable costumes. Yeah, what was your favorite one? <laughs> I was Aretha Franklin one year and I did like that. Yes. But the, the CeeLo year when we were the voice judges I was definitely CeeLo. memorable <laughs> for me. <laughs> All right, 552 is your time. Hundreds of local students are due in court today. Why would that be? Well, in this case, it's actually a good thing. So we'll tell you why when we come back. Keep it here. You made yeah. a good CeeLo. <laughs> Well, good morning, everybody. A little wet, a little slippery out there, but no deluge coming down. Just expect a little slippery street activity as you're going out, and that'll be the case for the next few hours. But mid to late morning, starting to dry up. It's 44 now and a high of 50 with only a couple of afternoon sun peaks, Kim. All right, thank you, Brandon. Well, here's a look at your commute over on I-96. This is right at Beach Daily, and we can see that traffic volumes are starting to build. Roads are damp from some overnight showers we had and all that rain yesterday, so just expect it to be a little slippery out there. But hey, accident-free to start off this morning. Well, that's good news. Thank you, Kim. A Michigan man is facing federal charges after making threats to kill President Trump, a truck driver named James Anthony Jackson, made the threats during phone calls to U.S. Secret Service offices, including the one right here in Detroit. He called from a 616 area code that linked back to an outreach center in Grand Rapids. Jackson is in custody in Washington state after being arrested in Idaho. He'll be back in court on Friday. Happening today, the Michigan Supreme Court is heading to high school. Hmm. Yes, the justices are going to hear arguments at Cass Tech High School as part of the Court Community Connections program. What an education that'll be for the kids. It all gets underway at 1230 this afternoon. They regularly hear cases at schools around the state to help expose students to the highest level of law in Michigan. Hmm. Maybe even seeing some future lawyers yeah. and justices as a part of that. Very cool. It is yeah. 557, everybody. And coming up all new here on Local 4 News today at 6 a.m. Local stories from Detroit. Woodhaven and Mount Clemens. Plus, from strangers to tainted candy. What's the biggest threat for trick-or-treaters? It's a Halloween hazard that every everyone can help prevent. Also ahead, a police officer finds himself on the wrong side of the law. What he was caught doing on camera. That more when we come back in a moment. It's live from downtown Detroit. Local 4 News Today at 6 starts now. Water emergency, thousands of Metro Detroiters still without water after the water main break or forced to boil water. 
businesses struggling to keep water on their shelves while others look to profit from the disaster. Watch out for the scams. Many get ready for a second full day with no water. There is relief in sight. The repairs are happening today and the part arriving from Illinois arrives sometime today as well. Welcome to Wednesday, everybody. It's kind of a dreary one, though, especially after yesterday. It's been dreary all week, I which know. I mean, the sunshine all weekend lasted us the first couple of days, but now it's it's getting a little rough. We shouldn't complain because <laughs> we've had a lot of sun in October and then it's not snowing. So there's some good news there. There you uh, go. Not good news for people in Oakland County, though, is more than mm -hmm. 20 schools closed in connection with the water main break. We're going to have those scrolling right here at the bottom of your screen throughout the morning and on clickondetroit.com. Yes, we will also get you to the very latest developments from the water emergency and also the repairs to that water main. But we do want to get you out of the door this morning. Let's start out with Brandon with a look at your forecast. Yeah, a little insult to injury with more rain coming down that will slow you down a little bit, uh, but it is not nearly as heavy. It is not nearly as gusty. It is improving in the second half of your hump day, but in the meantime, you see the rain very light light to moderate showers here over Oakland County, northern Wayne County here across uh, eight mile as you head into the Gross Points, St. Clair Shores area, southern Macomb County. And there's a little wave here coming through southern Washtenaw County that looks to be slightly heavier. Temperatures are in the low 40s out there. And again, the winds out of the west southwest, 5 to 15 today. Spotty showers, slippery streets early at the bus stop. The umbrellas, the the jackets 42 degrees, but this afternoon clouds to sun peaks 50 degrees or so our high temperature coming up. We'll take a look at an improving condition guys that uh, brings some sunshine back, but we do have your four zone weather ready to go. If you're heading out the door, you need your seven day find your zone on the weather tab. Click on Detroit.com. All right, Brandon, thank you. Right now we do want to check in with Kim, though. Yes, looking at some accidents to get the morning started. Yeah, well, we did have that rain overnight, as you were saying, lots of rain, so that's causing some troubles on our roads this morning. So let's take a look at what's going on right now. Let's zoom in to I-75 here. This is where we have an accident on the northbound side, just past nine miles, blocking your right shoulder. So just be careful in that area. Give yourself a little bit of extra time while traveling that way, too. And then we have an accident over in Sterling Heights. This one is affecting the southbound lanes of Ryan Road right at Metro Parkway there. The right lane is blocked. So if you do find yourself traveling through Sterling Heights, you may run into that. So just be careful there as well. But other than that, we are looking good. Roads are damp from that rain that we have out there from the past couple of days. So give yourself extra time and just be careful. Back to you. All right, Kim, thank you. It is 6.02 now. And emergency crews have, have been really working nonstop to try and fix this water main break that has left dozens of communities without water. But they can't do it without that key part. And the part was all the way over in Illinois. It's expected to arrive today. Nick Monticelli joins us now live in West Bloomfield, right at that intersection along 14 Mile, where the break happened. Uh, definitely can't arrive soon enough for the folks that are affected. Well, good morning to you. You know, this water main break is a huge inconvenience. Take a look at what's happening behind me. The crews are still working, working 24 hours a day. If you look closely, you can see the water gushing out of an area they were pumping out of. That is simply just so they can get to the repairs. The good news, though, as we mentioned earlier today, is that the big 48 inch pipe to fix all of this is on the way. This was the first sign the Great Lakes Water Authority had a real problem on their hands, and today we are all understanding just how bad it is. You know, the main break of this magnitude impacting so many customers is really unprecedented in our system. That break happened around 6 p.m. on Monday. The GLWA says a power issue likely caused a fluctuation in pressure, which likely busted this line, forcing a boil water advisory in many Oakland County communities and cutting the water completely to others like Patty, who lives in Novi. She stocked up with as much water as she could fit in her car. It's really unfortunate that we didn't get notice that it was going to be turned off completely. This morning, 51,000 people are without water and 12 communities are still affected by the boil water advisory. A replacement part has been ordered from Illinois and is scheduled to arrive today. But once repairs are complete, the water has to be tested for 48 hours. So Friday is the absolute earliest. The water could be safe to use again without boiling. 
Until the, the testing is official, we will not be relieving that, that full water advisory, even if people are seeing higher pressures. We're very sorry for the impact that this is having on families and businesses in the communities that we serve. And well, for many, it is at least an inconvenience. For others, it's much more than that. So I know for a lot of people this is a major inconvenience. I do want to pass along some words of advice from the GLWA though. If you do have water right now, you may want to consider filling some bathtubs and gallon buckets just in case you lose your water. At least that way you can keep boiling and have some water to brush your teeth, maybe wash a few things up and keep cooking. Otherwise, you might be in some real trouble as well. Like other communities like Novi already are who don't have water at all. We well, are live here in West Bloomfield, Nick Monticelli, Local 4 News today. Mm. We certainly feel for all those people yes, dealing with this do. right now. It certainly is a big inconvenience, but we know they're working at it around the clock because we've been there around the clock watching them. Yeah. So. Nick, thank you. For up-to-the-minute information surrounding the water emergency throughout Oakland County, you can head to our website at clickondetroit.com. There you can find also a list of water distribution centers to get free cases of water. We'll also keep you updated with the school closing list and any other information Oakland County is passing along. Five teen boys are behind bars without bond this morning in connection to that whole rock throwing death of a 32 year old man. The teens are between the ages of 15 and 17 and they were all arraigned on second degree murder charges in the death of Kenneth White back on October 18th. All five boys pleaded not guilty on Tuesday, but they will be charged as adults and if convicted, they face life in prison. A two family flat went up in flames late last night near Linwood and Fullerton streets, causing damage to a neighbor's home on Detroit's west side. Sources told Local 4 that a homeless man was seeking shelter in the vacant home when it caught on fire. Firefighters struggled to put the flames out because of low water pressure in the area. Right now, officials are still trying to figure out what caused the fire. In decision 2017, Detroit's two mayoral candidates, Mayor Mike Duggan and Senator, uh, State Senator Coleman Young II, are getting ready to duke it out right here in our studio tonight. Senator Young has previously raised concerns about the lack of debate, seeing as back in 2013, Mayor Duggan squared off against his opponent, Wayne County Sheriff Benny Napoleon, three times. Duggan won the August primary, 68 to 27 percent. The candidates are expected to give their stances on everything from crime to improving public transit. The election is just weeks away on November 7th, but you can hear from both candidates tonight. Our Devin Skillian will be moderating the debate. Gets underway at 8 o'clock right here in Local 4 Studio. Tonight, former Tigers ace and current Houston Astros pitcher Dustin Verlander is set to take the mound in Game 2 of the World Series in Los Angeles. JV is going to look to help his team even the series as the Dodgers, who were powered by Clayton Kershaw, took Game 1 by a score of 3-1. to one. Game 1 was the quickest World Series game in 25 years at just 2 hours and 28 minutes. And Jason just arrived here in our studio. We'll get an update from him and also an update from Kim on this major traffic trouble this morning. Two hours and 28 minutes? Are you kidding me? Some of those games have gone four hours. The verdict is in. Detroit's own Eminem took a political party to court over the use of his music. The ruling coming up. But first, customers are going to be loving this one. What McDonald's is finally bringing back. Keep it here. No, it's not the orange high seat. <laughs> we'll be right back, everybody. Let the debate. All right, welcome back, everybody. In today's consumer headlines, the Republican-led Senate narrowly voted la last night to repeal a banking rule that made it easier for Americans to sue their banks and credit card companies. Vice President Mike Pence cast the tie-breaking vote, giving Wall Street its first major win since President Trump took office. The rule would ban most types of mandatory arbitration clauses found in the fine print when people get new credit cards. And McDonald's is reinventing the ever popular dollar menu. The company will introduce a new value menu nationally in early 2018. The new menu will have items priced at one, two and three dollars. Just about 100 percent of franchises have signed up to participate in the new year. We're back in a minute. You didn't buy. Well, after nearly six months, we have a verdict. Yes, we do. And Jason, you could say this was a case of Detroit versus New Zealand. 
You could say that Detroit came out on top in this one, or at least Detroit's own M&M did. Back in May, we told you about the rapper's lawsuit against a political party in New Zealand accused of copyright infringement on the song Lose Yourself. The lawsuit said the party used an unlicensed version of his Grammy-winning tune without his or his publisher's permission during a 2014 election campaign for the country's prime minister. Take a listen to their ad. Nobody said it would be easy. But through your hard work and the National Party's economic management, New Zealand is heading in the right direction. Right now, our economy is growing faster than Australia and 28 other OECD countries. This election, the choice is... Well, obviously that sounds a lot like it, so let's listen to Eminem's version. Look, if you had one shot, opportunity so yeah it's like that's about as different as under pressure and ice ice baby now the words have been different but the guitar riff a little too similar do you think at least that's what a New Zealand judge decided awarding M&M's publisher more than 415,000 US dollars actually I think it's 415 750 433 citing the song's value and the party's blatant ripoff of that sound so in other words Without him, you wouldn't have mm -hmm. this tune to use for yes. that ad. So. New Zealand did make a nice ad. Yeah, they did. They didn't <laughs> even try to song. change it's so the catchy. rhythm. They didn't try to change the speed. Nothing. No. Like, come no. on. They probably thought, ah, we're way off in New Zealand. Yeah, He'll never not, hear he's about not it. For us over here. <laughs> yeah, he was. Four hundred and fifty thousand dollar mistake. Oh, mm -hmm. plus the thirty-three cents. Something like that. I did the conversion upstairs. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> All right, everybody. It is six thirteen now, and can you believe we're just days away from Halloween and our big costume reveal? Yes, you know we do it big here on Local Four. Our team prepares and here is a sneak peek <laughs> of this year's reveal all we know for sure here is that is Jason with our segment producer Cherie helping him get zipped into a part of the costume what's going on with your eyes there Jason they look I a little am, darker no I don't know I got in a, I got in a bar brawl Mark, yeah. make sure to tune in next Tuesday at 6 a.m. when we reveal this year's costumes hmm <laughs> I don't know we did it big this year I love the dramatic music as if yes. our costumes are ever that scary. <laughs> Maybe they are this year. Yeah, you never know. You never know. Especially with Jason and that shiner. <laughs> uh, it is 614, everybody. Let's turn things over to uh, Christina Agrulera. That was Father, AKA Kid Brew. Father Jason Carr. Oh. Come up. Mr. Well, yeah. Which way did we go? It's awesome. Just make sure you're tuned in on Tuesday morning for the big reveal. It's epic. It's huge. Huge. 44 degrees as we look live at the Little Caesars Arena. West wind is 7. A little drippy. We need the jackets and the umbrellas this morning uh, at the bus stop. 42 degrees. It's cool. It's not, again, as gusty. And the showers are a lot lighter but it's still showery out there. Not everywhere, but we have enough uh, to report that through the 8 o'clock hour. We'll have those spotty showers. Late morning through the lunch hour, though, everything is wrapping up. We're struggling to get out of the 40s today through noon, 48. Finally, a couple of peaks of sun later this afternoon and 50-ish for a high. Here are those showers. Southeastern Oakland County, Southern Macomb County, Northern Wayne County, and Southern Washtenaw. County the way it plays out right now, but after again the morning hours, we will see some improving conditions and as skies clear, cooler air still moving in 35 in Detroit tomorrow morning, freezing in some of your neighborhoods early on, but bright sunshine Thursday afternoon, middle 50s, 60 ish on Friday with rain coming in after sunset. So Friday night, Saturday morning shower chances and Looking ahead to Tuesday, Halloween, there is a, a, a cool down, breezy, and an isolated shower chance as well. Here is a look at your 1-800 Hanson's weather window, and it is the Fox Theater. Our Josh Strand out getting a shot of those beautiful petunias. Mums. Mums. <laughs> Mums the word. Lisa, she's our station mom. 
Thank you for that. Your uh, Fox Theater shot this morning is your Hanson's weather window. Now, Kim has some serious news and traffic. Oh, yes, I do. It is not a fun morning out on the roads. For those of you traveling on westbound I-96, it is closed right now at Telegraph. We're looking at the view right now. This is right at Beach Daily, and you can see here we've got the flashing lights. This is all due to an accident involving a vehicle and a semi truck. So, of course, those backups are going to continue to build as they get this cleaned up. So in the meantime, what you're going to want to do if you do travel over on westbound I-96, you're going to want to exit at Telegraph or before Telegraph. You can see they've zoomed out a little bit. Those backups are building back that way, but you want to exit before Telegraph and then you can use Plymouth Road or Finkel instead. And also we've got another accident over on northbound I-75 just past nine mile. This one is blocking the right shoulder. We're seeing a little bit of a delay here as well. And then one more accident in Sterling Heights that could slow you down for those of you who travel this way. The southbound lanes of Ryan Road right at Metro Parkway here. The right lane is blocked because of an accident there. So remember the roads are slick. We do have wet, wet roads this morning. Watch out for pooling, ponding. Take it easy out there. Back to you. Alrighty, Kim, thank you to 617 and our good friend Brandon Rue is going to be hitting the dance floor all for a good cause. Yes, he has been practicing for weeks for the night under the stars at the rooster tail tomorrow night to raise money for the full circle foundation for individuals with special needs over in the Gross Point community. And he is dancing and in fact has his dancing instructor here in studio to give us a sneak peek of what will be, I think, Brandon, the winning dance tonight or tomorrow. Tomorrow night, yes, at the Brandon Rooster Tail, they've <laughs> renamed it, from the Arthur Miller Studios in Sterling Heights, this is my dance partner, Jamie Palmer Smith. Yep, so uh, I am from Arthur Murray Dance Studio in Sterling Heights, and Brandon and I have been working together for a little while on this, and I'm ready to dance. So this is an abbreviated version, different song, different moves, no, but we're just... Slightly. We want you to come to the event tomorrow night, so this is our quick teaser for you. You ready? I think so. Yeah, I'm ready. Away to the competition, so that is not your actual that is dance not. song tomorrow night. And I screwed no. up a couple of moves on purpose. <laughs> All right, <laughs> just so, just so their guard is down. Right. Exactly. So really the event, improved. how many dancers are going to be participating? Um, there are five dancers participating, and then I have actually two of those people. So I'm oh, wow. excited about it. Yeah, you'll be pretty busy tomorrow <laughs> yeah. night. We've got all the information that you need to know right here on your screen. It's called an evening under the stars, and again, it's tomorrow night, October 26th, from 6 to 10:30 p.m. at the fabulous rooster tail that overlooks, of course, the Detroit River. Yes, and it benefits those individuals with special needs in the Gross Point community. There are still tickets available if you want to go and watch Brandon, but you can also vote online, and that can happen even as early as now because the person who raises the most money is the person that wins the evening under the stars. Yes, correct? and so yeah, uh, the scene on four tab of click on Detroit. We have all the information there and, and the to community vote. Page. Yep, the community I think it's $10 well. to vote. It's just a way of yep. additional fundraising and Jamie's split who to vote for <laughs> which partner. <laughs> You have yeah. two different partners. Well, tomorrow. you have the uh, the power of our local four viewers. Right. You can head to the community page of clickondetroit.com, spend that 10 bucks to vote for Brandon and help people with special needs. And you're going to be bringing the Mirabal Trophy here to the station tomorrow, <laughs> or excuse me, Friday morning. <laughs> we are yep. guaranteed All right. for that. Good All luck. Right. Well, thanks for coming in early. Of course. Look forward <laughs> yeah. to tomorrow night. It's going to yeah. be a good one. Back in a moment, everybody. Keep it here. Ahead, all for pets. Wait until you meet this adorable dog, our pet of the week. You can take home coming up. Plus, on the wrong side of the law, what a police officer was caught on camera doing inside of a home that has not facing charges. That's next. But first, it's time to introduce you to today's Facebook friend for the day. Is this you? Meet Melissa Saxon. She's from Whitmore Lake, and she's married with 
11 year old twins and works for the University of Michigan. Well, we want to send you a gift card to Happy's Pizza for being our friend of the day. And for everybody else, don't forget to like the Local 4 Facebook page. Once you're there, click on the front of the day tab. Tell us a little something about yourself and be sure to watch every day. You could be our next friend of the day. All right, welcome back everybody. It is 624 and this is no ordinary burglary. This is actually a police officer in uniform breaking into a house near Palm Beach, Florida. The homeowner was an elderly man who ended up in the hospital and then later died after suffering a fall during Hurricane Irma. So you're seeing uh, the officer here. He allegedly heard the garage door entry code over the radio when officers responded. And then he later, knowing the man wasn't home, broke into his house and stole his money, jewelry, and prescription medications. Unreal. Brandon, over to you. Two, three, four. I'm still dancing. Five, six, twirl, and oh, this is the rain that's coming in. This is going to slow some of you down, and it's actually creating some issues out there on some of the roads, which Kim will attest to. But be prepared for cool, wet, slippery conditions for the next several hours. But through the late morning and afternoon, improving conditions, even some peaks of sun in 50 this afternoon. Kim? All right, yeah, Brandon, that rain is causing some problems. We have westbound I-96 closed right now at Telegraph due to an accident involving a vehicle and a semi truck. So in the meantime, get around this one by exiting before Telegraph, and then you can use Plymouth Road or Fenkel instead. Oh, and all for pets, it is time to meet our pet of the week. This is Tempest. Mm -hmm. Good morning, Patrice. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about this adorable um, she dog. She came out of a hoarding situation, not a bad one, but a poodle hoarding situation. This is Tempest. She's a two-year-old poodle mix. We're like maybe a Maltese mixed with the poodle. Oh, she's um, so we sweet. We had to really cut her hair down because she was kind of matted. Oh, well, it feels really soft oh, now. Oh, you know I treasure oh, her. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Patrice, you know what you're doing with the dogs. <laughs> so she's two years old mm -hmm. and she's a little shy, but um, any restrictions? Um, I wouldn't do any small kids. No and small she kids? She still needs some more socializing. She's still real nervous. Needs to little be socialized more, but she does get comfortable once she gets in the house because she's right in the bed with everybody else. So. Oh, all right. Well, thank fine. you, Patrice, so much. So definitely call if you would like to adopt her. Or you can call What We Do for the Love of Pets Rescue at 313-671-4134. Thank you so much for joining us, Patrice. And we also want to let you know about a adoption update, one of our recent pets of the week. This right here is the Stanley family with their, or the, this is Stanley That's with Stanley. his new family, yeah. the pet, uh, this pet, uh, you can see they're so cute. Oh, I love that pet. This is the Barnett's. Right. Yes. Oh, right. such a great photo right there. Back to you guys. Sure <laughs> is. Like they were just meant to be together. Absolutely. It is 627. And next at 6.30, local stories for you from Roseville, Mount Clemens, and Warren. Plus, have you seen or maybe I should say smelled these guys? <laughs> uh, the unusual items that this man is accused of taking from one store coming up. Also, a crash caught on camera, but wait until you hear who the driver is and why he did this. Mm. That's today's top video, everybody. It's one minute away and the story will shock you. Keep it here. Film and sh Yeah, so this was no accident, everybody. It's today's top video, and it takes us down to the town of Milton, Florida, in the Florida Panhandle. That's where this video, it's of a former sheriff's deputy crashing his patrol car into his ex-wife's home. Unbelievable. This all unfolded in November of 2016. His name is Timothy Taylor, and he admitted he was under the influence of prescription drugs at the time. He pleaded no contest to DUI and criminal mischief charges and was sentenced to two years probation. We're back in a minute. Wow. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News Today at 6.30 starts now. Without water, hundreds of thousands of people impacted after a water main break in Oakland County. And then we'll tell you about the struggles that communities are facing this morning. Plus, using YouTube, Russia's role in the presidential election being pinned to a specific YouTube channel. Brandon? Taking a look at our maps out here, we've got some snow up here across the UP and parts of Ontario. Rain pivoting in here, but we're ready for it all to go.
<laughs> Isn't that the truth? We are all feeling that way. Enough is enough already. You got a round of applause like you will <laughs> Thursday night when Brandon straps on his dancing shoes. If you just missed, a, missed it, Brandon showed us how talented he is at dancing. Yes. Uh, dancing for a good cause Thursday night. More on that later. But uh, we do want to get you updated on this major traffic situation. Yes, Kim DeGiulio joins us now. A freeway closure, Kim? Absolutely. This is not going to be fun if you're headed out the door right now towards westbound I-96. It's currently closed at Telegraph. This is all to, due to an accident involving a semi-truck and a vehicle. I want to show you some live pictures right now to show you what this looks like. As you can see here, it looks like that is a, a truck uh, carrying gas and that car is right underneath it. So definitely not a pretty scene right now. They're working to get it cleaned up. We do have our sky four chopper over this scene as well. Just to give you a look at how bad these backups are. Uh, you can see here that that is completely closed westbound I 96 closed at telegraph. Uh, so in the meantime, what you want to do is uh, you can exit early and you can use Plymouth Road or Finkel instead over to you. Well, it was likely rain related. You never know. Don't want to assume anything, but we've had some showers here the last uh, two and a half days or so that just uh, soaking the streets. A little freighter activity going by, you see, heading, I guess, upstream toward uh, the gross points on the Detroit River. 44 degrees out there right now with showers coming down. Your forecast today in the 40s most of the day, but after lunch, we're going to start to see improvements in sky conditions and it will feel nicer. 50 degrees this afternoon. The west southwest winds still a little pesky 5 to 15, but no big problem. You know the gusts yesterday that were knocking over lawn chairs and Halloween decorations, but none of that today. Just a little nuisance breeze and nuisance showers this morning. I'll tell you what, right down here along I-94 close to the 275 corridor. Also parts of 96 obviously, but that's a decent little downpour coming down and pretty much heading straight west to east on that shower. We have some light snow coming down in a wintry mix in the Traverse City area. We have cooler air coming in later tonight. Wait till you see Thursday morning lows and a look into the weekend ahead. Alrighty, Brandon, thank you. It is 634 and right now we want to get you updated on the water emergency in the latest in Oakland County after this major water main break that's taken days to fix. Yeah, we're talking about a dozen communities. About 300,000 people are affected. 51,000 don't have water running at all. And replacement parts have been ordered, expected to arrive from Illinois today. Once repairs are complete today, though, water has to be tested for 48 hours before the spoil water advisory can even be considered to be lifted. Friday could be the early it's safe to use your drinking water at home. Nick Monticelli joins us now live in the community and also even the street for that matter that's most hugely impacted. Besides the water main break, there are other problems arising as well. Yeah, and it's really disgusting that we have to talk about it because we're talking about scammers and price gouging and some really strange things going on. But I do want to show you the water main break, which is right behind me here on 14 Mile Road in West Bloomfield. If you look carefully, you can see some water that is shooting out of the ground and then down 14 Mile Road. That's because there's a pump over there just getting that water out so they have access to that broken 48 inch line. But as we mentioned, there are scammers, there are price gougers, a lot of things that those of you who need water need to be aware of this morning. Businesses in Oakland County are having a hard time keeping up with demand, and by this morning, there's a good chance they are just flat out of these flats. Yeah, a lot of places around here are just out. The moment the doors opened at the Freshway Market in Walled Lake, the rush started. We were out of water by... Uh... 11.30 in the morning. All because people are dealing with this. It just dribbles out of the faucet. Also in Walled Lake, an apparent case of price gouging at this mobile gas station at Maple and Decker. They were selling a case of water for 19 bucks. By the time our cameras got there, the price was down to 4 dollars but earlier there clearly was a sign for $19. Jermont Terry talked to the owner on the phone. You see my sign over there, like four ninety nine. It says four ninety nine now, but the sign earlier clearly states it was nineteen dollars. You're telling me it will cost nineteen dollars every day? Yeah, if you buy every day the case, how much you want to sell? You tell me. So while you should watch out for price gouging, you should also be on alert for your own security. Oakland County's Homeland Security Division sent out this warning 
telling residents about an imposter. Someone is calling facilities, posing as a representative from the Oakland County Emergency Operations Center and telling them to evacuate. Why? We have no idea, but there are no evacuation orders in place. And now knowing that the earliest this could be fixed is today, meaning the earliest that water could be back to normal is Friday. These are all things that you in Oakland County should know about price gouging and scammers. Again, if somebody calls your facility or your home and tells you to evacuate, you should call Oakland County first to make sure that, that is legitimate because there's a good chance that it won't be. Everett and Rhonda, I just can't imagine why somebody would want to do that, and especially the price gouging. $19 for a case of water, it's outrageous. Well, well, thankfully, certainly lowered it. Well, yeah, thankfully, there's a lot of other places, a lot of the grocery stores in the yeah. area that are increasing their supplies and also some of those different centers right. in the different communities to get free water. Get so away for free. definitely It'll a business to avoid if they're going to gouge you that way. Nick, thank you. For up to the minute information on the water emergency in Oakland County, you can head to clickondetroit.com where you can find an updated school closing list as well as uh, information on boiling water and some of those uh, places that are giving it out for free, as you mentioned. Now we want to get to some stories that are making headlines all across Metro Detroit. Yes, they come to us from Roseville, Mount Clemens, and Warren, but we do want to begin here in Woodhaven where we are hearing the 911 calls made when an employee pulled a gun out inside of the Ford Woodhaven stamping plant. Some employees were told to run when Jacoby Hennings produced the weapon. Others were unsure what was happening. The Woodhaven Champion Plant, we may have an employee with a firearm. We have an active shooter. That's all I'm being told. We have an active shooter okay. and then no shots have been fired. We just were confirmed that we have somebody in the facility with a weapon. Well, they were certainly consistent about one thing. Somebody had a gun in their facility. Henning ended up taking his own life. No one else at that facility was hurt. Roseville police now are searching for this man who broke into a gun shop in the city, getting through the roof of Peter's gun shop, grabbing as many weapons as he could, and then just took off. Take a close look at this video, though. If you recognize him, call Roseville police. Macomb County Clerk Karen Springer is caught up in another controversy after she was caught on camera covering up a court ordered notice. You see her here right on camera. The sign stated that the clerk would obey the law and not harass employees. Springer says she's done nothing wrong. The court case is still pending. Are, are you concerned process. that's Due violating a court order? It's violating my rights. So you don't think this is violating a court order? No, it's okay. not violating court order. Springer has filed an appeal to the ruling on her own behalf, along with the pending trial. She's also facing an unrelated unfair labor practice charge from the American Federation of State, County and Municipal employees. And over to Warren now, where the search is on for two thieves who police say made off with a very unusual haul. This man entered the CVS on Nine Mile in Shaner, swiped the keys from behind the counter and then opened a cologne cabinet filling his backpack with $2,500 worth of cologne and then just took off with this man in the red varsity jacket. If you can identify either of them, contact police. The biggest threat to kids on Halloween is not from strangers or eating too much candy. I'm Dr. Frank McGeorge. Coming up, I'll show you the Halloween hazard everyone can help prevent. It's reach in the billions. The YouTube channel said to have a key role in spreading the Russian agenda during our presidential election. Rhonda? Thank you, Jason. It is playoff time for high school football. So here's a look at this week's Four Frenzy Game of the Week. Wyandotte Roosevelt will look to remain undefeated and punch its ticket to the district final as it hosts Temperance's Bedford High School. Kickoff for that game is Friday at 7 p.m. Good luck to both teams. Four Frenzy. Welcome back, everybody. As the investigation into Russia's influence during the presidential election continues, we're learning more this morning about one of Russia's biggest tools. Yeah, another new revelation. And as Jason shows us, it had billions of viewers, Jason. Yeah, RT, Russia Today, the world's most visited video site. Now YouTube is being credited with playing a crucial role in helping build and expand RT, an organization the American intelligence community has described as the principal international propaganda outlet and a key player in Russia's information warfare operations around the world. The negative campaigning, which has dominated the U.S. 2016 presidential race, has even made it tough for some to be able to tell the difference 
between the two rivals. The stories and the coverage on the YouTube channel range from elections and political controversies to the latest viral video. Until a few weeks ago, YouTube charged brands extra to advertise in front of those RT videos, and here's why. Number a number gathered by the Wall Street Journal shows just how big of a reach RT has in comparison to other news outlets on YouTube. In terms of views, more than 2 billion, just below CNN and far ahead of Fox News. And the same goes for subscribers, also in the millions. YouTube has since removed RT from its premium package for advertisers, but according to lawmakers, well, I mean, the damage is already done. The Russians clearly understand how social media works, uh, how to get in front of as many American viewers as possible on venues like YouTube. They've used it very successfully uh, as a way of pushing their propaganda and as a way of dividing Americans and setting each of us against the other. YouTube was an RT's only platform detailed in a dossier to the Congressional Committee investigating Russian influence. Twitter said RT spent more than $270,000 promoting tweets targeting U.S. users during the presidential election. Now, RT has denied using its reach to swing the election in President Trump's favor as it stands. Back to you. Alrighty, Jason, thank you. So we have a freeway closure mm -hmm. and another gloomy start to the morning. So yeah. this is the time we do weather and traffic, but yeah. you want to skip it? Why not? <laughs> Let's move on. Let's go In to... other news. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, no, we have to. Let's turn things over to meteorologist Brandon Rue, tracking our gloomy forecast, and Kim's got some issues on the roads this morning. We actually have the information that everybody wants to know about. Oh. Hey, buddy. Sprinkler wins every time. Tss, 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 tss. Out of here, Frankenstein. Here's a quick snapshot of the Halloween forecast, still almost a week away. Models are hinting at cool conditions, windy, breezy conditions. Might need a couple of layers. And again, new model data hints at a couple of late afternoon, evening showers out there. Just wait over the next few days as we get more and more data and it becomes a lot more clear before we worry too much about Halloween, but it always seems to be kind of weather, right? It's just fun to be out. Uh, here's a look at your numbers Four zones all in the 40s, 45 in Monroe, 44 in Detroit, but 40 ish in Howell, Ann Arbor, other areas as well. And we've got some showers around. These are some decent showers now south of I-94, southern Washtenaw, Wayne County, a little drippy. And this is the prime area here with all the highways and byways here in Wayne County. So 94, 96, 75, all drippy from Macomb, Oakland, down through Wayne and Washtenaw counties. Through the afternoon, though, conditions do improve, probably before lunchtime and less windy. 50 degrees this afternoon, 54 tomorrow as many are waking up to freezing condi conditions, clear skies cold, but it warms to mid 50s Thursday, Friday it's 60 with increasing clouds through the afternoon and rain chances Friday night through about maybe 10 11 AM on Saturday. So we're hoping Kim the big house is a dry one and should be decent, although chilly Sunday for the big Lions game Sunday night. All right, thank you, Brandon. Well, yes, we talked about that rain, and that is definitely causing some big problems on our freeways this morning. We've got trouble over on westbound I-96, currently closed right now at Telegraph, closed from Telegraph to Beach Daily. Now, I want to show you a closer look of what's going on here. We do have a photographer on the scene. Now, see that truck that's on the tow, getting on the tow truck right now? That was actually underneath that tanker. They pulled it out, getting that cleared up, but as you can see here, this is a big problem. It's going to cause lots of problems for your commute this morning. Backups are starting to build. So in the meantime, you're going to want to get around this. So I'm going to show you our 1-800 call Sam Trapper shot that is actually above this scene right now, just to give you some perspective of how big these backups are. If you are traveling this way, westbound I-96, right at Telegraph, what you're going to want to do is exit before Telegraph, and then you can use Plymouth Road or Five Mile to get around this one. And no matter what you do, you definitely want to give yourself some extra time, even if this isn't part of your commute, because those roads are slick this morning. So no matter where you go, watch out for pooling and ponding and just be safe out there. Back to you. We certainly hope that that driver is okay also. It is 649, everybody. 
And in good health this morning, the biggest threat to kids on Halloween is not always from strangers or even eating too much candy. On this Wellness Wednesday, our Dr. Frank McGeorge is here to highlight the most common hazard and what everyone can do to reduce the risk. The biggest threat to your child's safety on Halloween is actually from drivers. Children are four and a half times more likely to be hit by a car on Halloween than on an average night. But these accidents are preventable. Halloween is exciting, and that makes kids more likely to dart out in the street where drivers may not see them. Remind your children to stay on the sidewalks and cross at the corner, not between cars. Add reflective tape to your child's costume or bag to make them more visible and stay close to younger kids. To reduce the risk from cars, start out while it's still light. And if your child wears a mask, consider enlarging the eye holes. If your child is going to wear a mask, um, you want to make sure that the eye openings that, that you can see uh, very clearly, especially in the dark when they're going to be going from house to house. Trick or treat! Doctors also treat a lot of falls on Halloween. Stick to tennis shoes and be sure your child's costume isn't too long. You know, they can stand still in front of the mirror and look great, but then actually moving in the costume can be difficult. If you put out Halloween decorations, watch out where you put those extension cords. Trick-or-treaters often cut across lawns, trip, and then get hurt. Now, most importantly, drivers need to slow down on Halloween and be especially careful backing out of driveways and when you're going through neighborhoods. It's something that everyone can do to help kids have a safe and happy Halloween. Back to you. Yeah, you definitely got to be safe on Halloween. Yeah, Thank you, do. Doc. It is 651 and it's time to announce the Grand Marshals of this year's America's Thanksgiving Parade presented by Art Van. And they are both pretty remarkable Detroiters. One of them is a name and a face you're sure to recognize. In fact, both of them, but mm -hmm. one you saw for about 38 years right here on Local 4. The other, a Grammy nominated musician. We're talking about artist Big Sean hailing from Detroit and our broadcast legend from here on Local 4 for so many years, Carmen Harlan. Both have been named this year's Grand Marshals. This year's theme, Woodward Avenue of Dreams. Nice. In celebration of Woodward's transformation, our parade coverage right here on Local 4 begins with our live broadcast of our morning show on Thanksgiving morning. Oh, from Hockey Town, our, our tradition to kick off our six hours of broadcasting on Thanksgiving. Very cool. Looking Dick forward Sean, to it. Yeah, because he was with us for the fireworks, the, the fireworks, summer, all the big events. He was with us for the parade a few years back, I so know. it'll be good to catch up with him again. It certainly will. Yeah. We appreciate all he's doing for Detroit and Carmen as well. Yep. Today's top stories to watch for are next. Sky Forge. Welcome back, everybody, and your stories to watch for here on your Wednesday morning. Emergency crews have been working around the clock to fix that broken water main in West Bloomfield that has left a dozen communities without water or with uh, the need to boil the water. A key part to the much needed fix, though, arrives today from Illinois. Once repaired, water will be tested for 48 hours. Officials expect to have clean running water completely back by Friday. Tonight, Detroit Mayor Mike Duggan and challenger Coleman Young II are going to be facing off in the Detroit mayoral debate tonight. You can watch it. Their only televised debate tonight at 8 right here on Local 4. Kim? All right, big problems over on westbound I-96 currently closed right now at Telegraph. I want to show you a better look at this with our, one of our photographers there to show you exactly what this looks like. Now, this accident involving a vehicle and a tanker there, but they're working to clean it up. But in the meantime, if you do travel this way, you're going to want to exit before Telegraph, and then you can use Plymouth Road or Five Mile instead. Uh, real quickly, just to show you some showers out there, it, mainly south of I-94, but it's been wet for uh, several hours, so it's a little slippery. Better afternoon. Yeah, stay safe, everybody. The Today Show is next. Have a great day. Happy hump day.